Uh, all right. Hi, everybody. Hi, chat. Uh, my name is Romilio, and I'm going to be running Octobeth Traveler. The category I'm doing is Tressa, any percent, which is there's eight characters, and we would only need to finish one character in the game. This one is Tressa. Uh, and before we start, do we want to just do a quick roll call for the couch? I'm Star Smiley. I'm Rexon. I'm Jello. And then uh, they don't have mics, but Arcariot and Mamgar sitting over here. We've got Sayuri over here too. Oh, where is he? There, there he is, is. <laughs> right here. <laughs> All right. So timing will start when I choose yes on Tressa. So are we ready? Yeah, let's boogie. Okay. Three, two, one, go. So right away, you're seeing I'm able to just skip cutscenes, and that's actually one of the reasons the game is able to be completed so quickly. Uh, you're just able to hold B throughout the whole thing. <laughs> All right. So the first part of each chapter is just an intro cutscene, or not necessarily a cutscene, but it basically is scripted. Uh, you just have to go around and do story progression for a little bit before you can actually get to encounters and everything. So while I do that, I'll explain like path actions. Each character also has a certain technique they can use, like tresses, which we just saw there is purchase, and you can purchase items. It's required for her story, and it also lets you purchase random items from random NPCs as well. And some of those are actually very good, so we'll be utilizing that a lot throughout the run in order to get a lot of damage output and survivability. And then another thing that happens with purchase is sometimes you can get a discount on items. And the money route is not very tight, but a big discount will definitely help throughout the run. And that was basically the full intro, so now we're getting into the rest of the game. And this first area, the encounters are random. So hopefully we can get two. Three is also fine. And this is a good time to explain the battle system. So you're able to break enemies with your weapons and magic. And that guarantees a runaway. So if I do do that, um, or if I am able to do that, I will. Otherwise, I could just run away instantly as well. And then another thing to the battle system that's oh. relatively different from other RPGs is uh, the JP. Excuse me. Excuse me, the BP, which is boost points. And when you boost, you can actually do much more damage than everything else, or every other attack. And that'll be one of the big reasons we're able to defeat bosses quickly. Perfect. Got two encounters only. That's pretty good. Usually on a regular uh, uh, route to the Caves of Maya, you usually tend to encounter like three, but two is very good. Yeah. And a little thing that was not very noticeable, but right there actually skipped the cutscene entirely. Didn't have to wait for the bar to, quote, to go all the way full. And that's because there's this little trick with text boxes and cutscenes that if you close the text box at the same time the cutscene ends, it'll save and store that. Uh, input for the next cutscene, so I'm able to skip single text box ones. Here's an instance of breaking and killing the enemies. This guy is one of the only encounters that we have to defeat in the first area, just for the JP, and then the experience will also get us to level two. And now, this might be a little close to get a third encounter, but I think it should be fine for now, because we did get past the chest. What to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And right there, that was actually a guaranteed runaway. There's other scenarios besides breaking that will guarantee runaways, like sleeping. But uh, here, I'll probably have the couch commentators take over for the fight while I'm doing menus. All right, so this is Mick and Mac, the first boss of the game. Um, we're going to be breaking the bosses, because when bosses are broken, they take double damage. 
So you can see Mermilio is going to lower the shields of both of the bosses to one, and then he's going to try to kill them very quickly. With the with the he's going to try to kill them very quickly, and <laughs> he's going to use the Soul Stone, uh, which does a flat 400 damage. He's also going to make use of Trade Winds, which um, does a lot more damage than normal attacks. So here you can see the bosses both have one shield each. Um, he's healing to buy himself time so that he can get extra BP because he wants to have max BP going into this turn. And here he's going to break both of the bosses and then kill them extremely quickly because they take double damage when they're broken. All right, and that should do it for the first boss. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the boss fights will be uh, just manipulating turn orders and uh, trying to break as soon as possible in order to kill on that one broken turn. So once you actually beat your first character's chapter one, the world basically becomes an open world and you can go anywhere on the whole map. Uh, you can technically uh, go to like final chapter areas, but it's very hard to do so because enemies will just one shot you. But instead of doing a quick detour for some items, we're actually just gonna grab our second character right off the bat. Gonna head over to Atlas Dam for Cyrus. And he's like a fan favorite boy character in this game. Uh, yes, our fan favorite nerd boy. <laughs> yeah, we are dealing with um, random encounters on the way there too, but they're usually they usually happen in the same spots every time, give or take a few steps. If I get really lucky, I'm able to skip some, but this is technically possible on this screen. Actually, I'll go for it. Nice. Yeah, you can, uh, bit by bit, you can walk instead of run to help out the encounter rate. But, like, right there, that was way too far and a little bit too unlucky to get it there. Nice. I'm getting pretty lucky on the encounter so far, though. Don't jinx yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta save it for Kate. Ooh. Yeah, I can go ahead and explain that now. There is a certain enemy called a Kate that I believe it's unlocked after chapter one. And they're like your super um, super high XP enemies. They're hard to kill. They run away often and they're super rare. So if we do find them, it's pretty helpful. You get a lot of JP and experience and money. Oh no. Um, all right, well, surely I won't fail four times here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Oh. Okay. Okay, we're good. All right, good, good, good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and heal in case I get that same encounter. That doesn't usually happen. Usually by the third uh, attempt to escape, you usually pretty much almost guarantee it. Oh. <laughs> All right. You jinxed uh, yourself. We're ready for this one though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not Not too ready apparently. Yeah, it is um, impossible to guarantee a runaway versus multiple enemies at this stage. <laughs> We're having the same luck. <laughs> this is actually the same situation. Surely I won't fail it a fourth time. All right. Oh, there you go. Hey, we got it. Um, I do believe after every level up, your character gets fully healed, so it won't be a problem coming into this next chapter. Yeah, you do. You're you get a full like HP and SP restore every time that you level up. So getting damaged on the way to um, uh, Cyrus's uh, chapter one boss um, is pretty trivial just because we're going to be grinding for maybe two enemies on the way. Yeah, and right there I was able to just skip the beginning of his tail, which is basically every character's intro. It only happens on chapter ones, though. 
And then here we are taking the encounters for the JP. And JP are job points, and you can get new skills whenever you hit a certain JP threshold. So we want 30 on Tressa right now before the next boss fight. Yeah, and these battles will vary depending on who goes first. Cyrus will go first and guarantee a one turn fight. If Tressa goes first, you would need to defend with her and kill on the next turn. And then one thing that is good about Cyrus going first is there's a mechanic in this game where if you defeat enemies in turn one, you get an extra JP boost. I believe it's 10%. So that's always helpful. That's good. That's a good encounter. Hopefully Cyrus goes first. Oh, okay. Uh, so here I would have to defend in order to make it as short as possible. Defending will alter the turn order and make them go faster than the other characters. <laughs> <laughs> Darn tootin'. All right, so right there is our first skill and possibly the best skill in the whole game, Hired Help. Oh, man, this is, <laughs> this is the best skill. Oh, man. Yeah, it's the main way of damage output, and you'll see during this boss fight as well. Yeah, man. So Tress is going first here, and conveniently enough, we got a Soul Stone for free from Mick and Mac, so... He's going to kill the ads with this little stone. And then he's going to proceed to break and use hired help. Basically pay to win. Um, yep. Ooh, that's a good one. That's about a 51%, 52% chance to try to get the collect. So he defends with Cyrus um, to get the four hit out of this and then pay to win. Yeah, the reason it's so great for hired help is because it's not based on any of your stats or your levels. You just need to have money for it. Yeah, you're gonna, you guys are gonna be seeing a lot of hired help uh, throughout the uh, run. Um, so that's why we have like a very specific, like a very specific like money route that we try to like adhere to. There's not too much leeway, but definitely. Uh, like, definitely a little tighter than one would like. Yeah, this route has been very optimized, and even since just submission of this game for AGDQ, so including money routes, different characters even, that we pick up. And then here we have Cyrus's path action, which is scrutinize. And basically, you can scrutinize people to get items, like right there, I got a light stole stone medium. And you can gain new information. Uh, there's other things like discounts at the inn and more people sell things. But the main one we want here is just items throughout the whole run. And then hired help is really great for clearing off enemies, which we need to do in order to get Cyrus up to enough JP for his, um, his equip skill. Uh, yeah, frogs are really bad, actually. They, are, they only give, I think, four JP each. So, I don't really want to not take any. Oh, whoops. Oh, I did not boost with Cyrus. Well, this will defeat them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, these ones will give me eight right here. The best encounter to get is uh, technically a Kate, but they're super rare. So, what I'm hoping for is ants. The ones that bodied me earlier on the way to Atlas Dam give a lot of JP. So, probably another on this screen. Ah, the frogs. Yeah, Tressa here will just defeat them with the bandits. You got time for a couple of donations? Uh, yeah, we're gonna... Just one quick one, actually. All right, quick one here then. We've got $8 from Sith Ocean Heart. Let's hope Tressa can collect a lot of cash to get rid of cancer forever. One of my favorite games, so good luck on the run. Octopath Hype! Hype! Yeah, so this and this area right here is a very high danger level. Oh, there's Ooh. a gate. Oh. Dude. Oh, no. Oh, unfortunate. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, it's still possible. I'm oh, probably wait. surviving here. Okay, so if, it, if they gather strength, if all of them gather strength, that's perfect. Okay, yep. there we yes. go. <laughs> there we go. We got it. And then I have another slight stone medium from the scrutinize. Hey. Like, oh, check this out, guys. That's perfect. Yeah. Woo! Look at that level up! 
Yeah, because of that, Kate, I am level 14 already. <laughs> good. That was yeah. very, very good. That was very, very lucky. Also, um, as a personal incentive, if um, Mermilio would get a Kate on the run on stream, I was going to donate $15. So there, there you go. There's my 15 <laughs> for charity. Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> You're <Yeah>. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> to give an idea of how good that Kate is, uh, level 14 is normally the level that I finish the run at, and I'm already there. <laughs> but uh, you can go ahead and do a couple of donations now. We're going to travel to some towns right now. All right, awesome. Uh, we got $40 here from Shadow Dart. Octopath in just over an hour? I am super excited. I just finished everything in just under 120 hours, so I'm pumped to see this destroyed. Good luck, Mermilio. I've also got $50 here from Amy K. Always looking for a bargain. $20 from Verxel. Super excited for this run because, tre because Tressa is the best one. Good luck with the run and a big thank you. <laughs> thank you. We, that's a very long stretch of area without a town, but we're going to grab and tag this town on the map, and you're actually able to warp in this game, so once you have reached a town, you can always warp back to there. And this is Hanit's town, who we will be gathering for our adventure, but uh, not just yet. You'll see Marmilio getting a lot less encounters right now because he equipped a support skill called Evasive Maneuvers, which basically makes it so that he can walk 2.5 to three times longer without getting an encounter. And that's pretty good for a speedrun. Yep. Uh, right there, you saw me scrutinize for another soul stone. Uh, scrutinization is actually percent based on your level. Uh, there's the noble and the rogue characters, and there's four of, they basically have the same uh, path actions. However, one is percent based and one is like always guaranteed based on your level. Which, the rogues are a little bit nicer in that because you can do late game stuff much earlier, just a low percent. Darn. This is actually a pretty tough area to get out of without an encounter. Yeah, I have been using a lot of bandits to just clear out things. I did get the Kate hover, so I should be fine. And then, because of that Kate as well, uh, I'll probably need to be vigilant about Cyrus is level up since he needs to use a lot of um, SP. Yeah. Other than the chapter ones, you do not get fully healed after you complete the chapter. So right here is the first big part of the large detour we're making before continuing on to haunt it. Uh, we want to get secondary jobs for everybody. Right now, we only need Warrior and the Merchant. Warrior is good because you get the Thousand Spear spell, which uh, helps you break easier. And you get Insight, which will cover your other characters from battle. And then Merchant is super OP, and we would like to hire helps. Why well, have one pay to win when you can have two? <laughs> so uh, as we're going through to get the other uh, the other. A uh, job, you can get a couple donations in as well. All right, I have $100 here from Bluezer. Hey, Bluezer, nice. Good luck, Merm, and shout outs to the entire Octopath Traveler speedrunning community. We've come a long way since the 2017 demo. GG on picking the best category, and P.S., don't forget to press plus to hear travel banter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. Um, right around chapter two, that, that actually becomes a really big meme. But <laughs> I definitely want to see chat spamming plus right around chapter two. I'll tell you guys when. Thank you. You're welcome. Got time for one more? Yep. I have $15 here from Eternal Dream. Oh, another runner. Yeah. Hey, guys. Shame I couldn't make it there. Octopath was my first speed game ever, and I couldn't be happier for having it be part of this amazing event. Oh, and I'll donate another 50 if you encounter a Kate during the run. 
<laughs> May there RNG, goes your 50. May RNG be ever in your favor. Yeah, that was easy. Thanks, Eternal. Yeah, um, so on the way here, this is actually a much longer area than any ones we've gone through before. And even with evasive maneuvers, we won't be able to get it in one trip. So what I did earlier was a save and quit, and that reloads the step encounter. And then it also reloads through every, uh, every time you go through a different area. So it is possible to get encounters on the next few screens, but it's pretty rare. And then I also have an extra soul stone uh, in my inventory in case that happens. Here we're going to scrutinize for another soul stone. So earlier in the run when I used soul stone mediums, they were able to kill off pretty much every enemy at that point. And now we're only picking up soul stone larges. There's, they're very good for damage in the later areas. And then here you can notice danger level 23, which is much higher than our 14 right now. This is one of the more tedious screens to get through without a, an encounter. Perfect. Nice. He makes it. And now we're at level 45. Uh, a much bigger jump. Uh, this is actually a chapter four town. And the route works out perfectly because there's a lot of money and resources in the town that we should get early on. And it happens to be Tress's chapter four, so we can warp back here later. And unfortunately, in this area, since it is level 45, uh, Soulstone Large will not defeat the enemies. So we do need to save and quit. It's very interesting because in that area, you also can encounter, you, you also have the possibility of encountering a chubby Kate, also known as Garfield. <laughs> yeah. He hates Mondays. Chubby Kates are uh, just, super versions of the regular Kates. And we're technically able to kill them right now, but it's well, you would have to have a lot of luck for it. And then a lot of luck just to even encounter one. I think, Jello, you have like a theoretical route if you did encounter a chubby Kate. Yeah. Yeah, the chubby Kate will save a decent amount of time because uh, while the Kate gives 3,000, uh, money, you get 50,000, I believe, with the Kate, with the Chubby. Right. And this is actually the last new area we're going to be detouring to that doesn't have any story progression yet. Right now, we're going to be warping to Grandport, picking up a bunch of resources for the, the next few bosses, and the final boss, I guess. Uh, and then we can continue on grabbing characters and beating chapters. As I do this town, you can have more donations as well. All right, awesome. I've got $25 from Ben. Try this one on for size. <laughs> I've got $250 from Tundra Wolf. I'm so glad to see Octopath Traveler being open for business at a GDQ event. I'm sure everyone will get more than they bargained for. Boy, these funds are killing me, man. <laughs> oh, they're coming, man. Oh, here we go. They, they keep on coming. <laughs> Also, $25 here from Shelby222. Shout out to the guy in the back shouting out Tress's lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I think one thing that we forgot to mention is uh, Tress's, I believe, passive ability is with Eye for Money, where um, when, whenever we enter a new area, we actually pick up a certain amount of, like, cash every time that we go into a new area. So if you notice, when we went into Grandport, we picked up around like 3,000, and then we exited out, we went to the lock, and we picked up another 1,000, and then we went back to Grandport, and we picked up another 2,000. That also helps with our money route, and we definitely took that into consideration. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I, I run this category so much, I just take that for granted. It's another one of the reasons Tress is so great for speedruns. This is a, a bit of a long area as well. Yeah, as, more, as the more optimized the run gets, the more risk you have to take with encounters. 
And while most encounters won't be able to, to feed your party, it does take at least 15 seconds to get one. And then upcoming is the boss fight, Gisarma. It's pretty scary for Hanit, especially not at all for Cyrus and Tressa now that they're 10 levels higher than normal. But uh, Hanit could still die turn one. A perfect turn order would be to have Tressa go first and then she can raise Hanit's defense. And he gets a good turn order. That's really good. Because Merc's uh, buff the party's defense, Hana has a much lower chance of dying here. She might still die, but she lives. That was lucky. That's really good. It was really close, but yeah, that was very good. And now Merm's just gonna break, and then Gisarm is actually like a giant tank. He has twice the DHP of basically any other boss's level. Um, I don't know why, but that's just how it is. Uh, so Merm's gonna have to use three Soul Stones and Bandits as well to kill Gisarma. His turn order allows for him to go for a collect here, which may help him with his money route. He might be able to be able to use more bandits further down the line. Let's do this. Thank you. No. Oh. Uh, Too bad. Trying this. <laughs> yeah, that extra soul stone. I'm glad I caught it. I didn't notice it when I didn't get it, but that would mess up my menu in that fight. I think that fight only, though, so we're fine for the rest. Yeah, I am pretty good on money because of that, Kate, so nothing really to worry about. And then, now that we have three characters, what's left is just get our fourth and beat the game, pretty much. So. We're speeding right through. Oh man, I can't wait for this guy. Love, love this next person. <laughs> Personally, my favorite character. Yes, the next character we're going for is the edgelord himself, Therian. Literal best boy. <laughs> it wouldn't be a JRPG if the edgelord wasn't a good party member. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, whoops. That's uh. unfortunate. Yeah, Therian is a great party member. All of these party members really are uh, kind of amazing for speedrunning. Cyrus has evasive maneuvers, Tress is a merchant. Uh, Hanit has leg hold trap, which is very useful for some bosses. And Therian has armor corrosive, which is the defense down spell of the game. So you should be safe from encounters for the rest of the areas. Yeah, you don't usually get an encounter right around this area. It's rare, it could happen, but it usually never does. If you have like pretty decent movement. All right, so this is Therian's town right here. Yeah, luckily, all the chapter ones besides the first one of your character, I'll go by really fast, especially when you have late game items at your disposal. I would say like Therian's chapter one is especially fast. Blinking, you might miss it, honestly. Yeah. The, luckily, there's no encounters during the his chapter one, and the boss fight is a one-turn kill. <laughs> so in this area, it's very long, and when you're in dungeons, I'll call this a dungeon, uh, dungeon. The, in, the encounter step does not reset when you enter loading zones. So in order to get past that, uh, we decided to do a quick save and reload. It is still technically possible oops, uh, to get an encounter on the second screen after the, re the reload, but it's very rare. I think, I think uh, there's only two people that have gotten it. Yeah, Bluzer actually, Bluzer actually had a, a run where he went through the entire mansion without getting an encounter. Yeah, also a very rare possibility. <laughs> As I was reloading, I got scared that I was in the wrong file because I was level 14. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here, Tressa has her equip spill. We talked about Cyrus's evasive maneuvers, but Tressa's equip spill, or <laughs> equip skill that we used is endless what items. So she has a possibility of not um, using up her item when she does. Yeah, so good turn order here. She has a. She's going first, so I can try and go for the save. 
No, nah, darn. It's a 25%, so you'll see it pretty often, especially if you're doing a lot of boss fights, but I think Tressa only has like two opportunities to use items because hired help is so great. So yeah, that was the final chapter one. The music in this game is a banger. Oh my goodness. Like, <laughs> we, we can talk honestly about the music for days on end. <laughs> yeah, music, uh, I'm a fan of probably the mountain areas, but music everywhere, especially the boss fights, are really great. So this is actually one of the areas where it's pretty likely that you'll get an encounter and what I would like to use a soul stone on because I do still have an extra. Perfect. Nice. That's very good. Yeah. If I used it there, I would pick up another one, but I, keeping that extra soul stone is so good. Chapter 2 uh, is probably the largest reset point for everybody that runs Tressa. She, um, she has to go through a pretty long area where you, the enemies are so high level, it's not very likely you get to run away from them and sometimes you'll just die flat out, too. Okay. Starting with chapter two. Yeah. If I did mess up that menu, I would be able to just go to the tavern and start it up again. <laughs> chat, press plus. <laughs> just spam that all over chat. I want to see that on the VOD. So here's where we're using path actions to just progress the story. Um, a couple of cutscenes, so some donations are available. I just want to let you know that plus spam is real right now. Ooh, <laughs> hallelujah! They're, they're going nuts in there. It's just all pluses. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I got fifty dollars here from Eternal Dream. I am a man of my word. Here's another fifty for that Cade encounter. My man, let's go. Thanks, Eternal. Thank you. I've got $15 from Cinnamon Roll. Good guy Game and Shout got giggling gray geese to Google Gaming as he greedily gobbled green grapes. <laughs> that was really impressive, man. Yeah, it was very impressive, actually. <laughs> I, I asked him to send tongue twisters. They were listening. <laughs> <laughs> We can probably get one more before we start up. All right, I've got, let's go, $100 here from Amanda. Loving the Octopath run and the enthusiastic crowd. <laughs> yeah, man, take a, take a round of applause for the crowd. You this guys are awesome. Yeah, there, you guys really. are great today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a big shout out to all my friends in the crowd. Thank you. All right, so uh, we, we talked about this earlier. We were practicing commentary. If we should talk much about the story, even though we skip all of it. Uh, but I don't remember what the lore is on chapter two. I think someone said Omar stole Tressa's diary and now she's going to go beat him up. You got it wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> Incorrect. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I, I think it's uh, like some weird capitalism thing. I don't know. Like it, his it's... boyfriend gets kidnapped. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, nice. So that was actually the scary area where I would wanted to keep my soul stone. So now that I have extra, I can save a bit of time later on. I'm gonna pop in here and grab this extra pomegranate. Uh, pomegranates, they give you an increase in your BP, so they're very useful for the boss fights where you use that. Yeah, another save and reload here, just like uh, in Therian's chapter. One thing that's really nice about this game is every time you enter a loading zone, the game autosaves for you, so we can just load up the autosave right away. Convenience at its finest. So the purple chest right here is another important reason why Therian is so helpful. Only he can unlock those and that gives us a hasty helmet. Really good defense and it increases your speed 
by a, a whole lot. Yeah, so this menu, um, basically Merm is setting up for basically what is like the rest of the run. So we um, changed Cyrus's job to become a warrior and we taught him Inside and Thousand Spears, which we'll be using later. We changed Hanit to become a merchant because we need two merchants to do hired help. And we taught uh, Therian Armor Corrosive so we can deal even more damage when, uh, when we use mm -hmm. hired help. Um, so in this fight, because Omar's two adds have a very high tendency to just one-shot your party members, we want to kill them right off the bat. So you'll see Merm using two soul stones to just kill them. That was actually quite lucky because they usually, use, like, some of the, um, the minions, they have a really high chance of using this move called Violent Slash, which hits uh, all of our party with for a, a, a lot. So... We got lucky that that one of the minions didn't use it. So you'll see that Merm used Armor Corrosive. That multiplies all physical damage by 1.5. So when Merm uses Vet, he will, uh, Omar will take upwards of 25k damage, depending on damage rolls. You'll see that here. Ooh, man. That's ridiculous. 6,000 per hit is insane. It's basically 7,000. Yeah. There you go. And that's Omar. Yeah, the turn order I was given, I would have had to risk getting Violent Slash, but luckily that didn't happen. And then it was a pretty good, it was a pretty good choice to make because all the extra levels, um, Cyrus and Tressa, hello, <laughs> Cyrus and Tressa were definitely living any attacks. All right, so it's a pretty good, um, it's pretty good that Darian's town is close to the chapter three, so we can warp there and go there straight away. Now, here's probably the biggest update in the route in the past few months. Uh, before, we would get the hunter job as well as warrior and merchant, and you'd give that to Tressa, but we just took it out. Um, there's a, because of the hasty helmet, Cyrus has a very high chance of going first in pretty much every battle. It's not 100% because turn orders are randomized to an extent, but uh, it's a very high chance. So we just bank on Cyrus going first in the final boss, and then if not, we have a lot of backup strats without Hunter. Oh man, I hate going this way. Usually, like... Nice. Well, yeah. Like, if you have really good movement, like, you can get to Victor's Hollow without getting an encounter. But if you're me, and bad luck, there you go. <laughs> A little bit more story progression. Uh, still not that much, <laughs> but uh, this will unlock the next area. Uh, so up next, it's a bit of an RNG purchase. A lot of the times, if you're doing very optimized strats, this purchase that you do right here will make a lot of difference. If you do get a discount, it's over $1,000. All right, did not get it there, but we are still great on money. Yeah, that Kate definitely helps out with that money. Here, Merm is going to the forest of no return just to grab some more money. Um, he's, he's grabbing the elemental gray, glaive, the silent bandana, and maybe a soul stone? Yeah, I'm grabbing the soul stone. And I think I have an extra still, right? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Okay. I think I'll choose to skip the father and fighter. Uh, if you've played this game at all, you'll probably know the character Kit, and he's the first time you um, learn about, like, side quests, basically. We left him to die, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we just skipped him, so we didn't actually get uh, the cutscene for any side quest. And that's a pretty decent time save, but it's very hard to keep the money route up. Now the next area is, they're probably the longest area in the game that we go through where we need to not have an encounter. Right now, I have a decent chance of surviving and just breaking. If Cyrus goes first, that'll be very helpful, but there is a certain encounter that is probably impossible for me to break at this point. Yeah, level 33 right now, and we're still 14. 
Uh, that reminds me to check Cyrus's SP right now. I don't think he leveled up. Can I throw out a donation real quick? Yep. All right. This one is for the audience. We've got $50 here from Robobo. May the spirit of commerce guide you through a swift and pot profitable speed run. I'll throw in another $50 if the audience gives me their best Ulbrich impression. My blade is unbending. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Thank you, crowd. Appreciate it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, so Cyrus is just great on uh, SP. It only takes 20 for 1,000 spears, which we'll be using in the next fight. There is a... So there's another save point later in this area that we can go to, but sometimes you don't even make it before you get an encounter. So hopefully we can make it. And then while we're going, I can explain the boss fight a little bit. Now, most of the boss fights so far have been... Uh, they've looked like they're scripted, but there's actually a lot of variation in certain orders and what you do. But this is actually the only one where it's pretty much the same every single time. There's only one real thing that can really go wrong in this fight, and it's if Hanit's Reign of Arrows hits six times, because it's randomized to hit between three and eight times. Letting my arrow fly. Arrows are <laughs> oh, I, was, I was ready for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Wait. C4, we were like, oh my gosh. So now that Reign of Arrows has only hit four times instead of six, this uh, boss fight's scripted. It's important to note at this point in the game, basically, if any person gets hit by any attack, they will, they're will they going to die because we're in Tressa's Chapter 3 and our party's like level 14. So our solution to that is basically just kill the boss before he even gets an attack off. Once again, Merm's using Armor Corrosive and Veterans. Pretty... Pretty typical combo you'll see in this speedrun. Cool. We're going to steal that Olive of Life real quick, just for some extra cash. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, that was really close. OK, cool. He collects 16k from the boss. It's 100%, because the boss is so low HP. It's kind of like Pokemon. Um, and he finishes him off with the Soul Stone. All right, so everyone leveled up there, so I'm fine for level ups and SP. Okay. So just a little, few more cutscenes, then we can start chapter four. Oh, I love this part. <laughs> <laughs> this part is like the best. We're able to hear some cutscene finally. After, After the final race, race with with the Zar. <laughs> we tried to stink it. <laughs> no effort made. Yeah, usually um, within that cutscene, you can hear um, that little quote that um, Leon does. I think that's his name. Yeah, that's yeah, Leon. Yeah, yeah, that's Leon. So yeah, we usually hear that little tiny like, like clip, and I don't know. It, it, it's just become a meme in like the community. All right, so. What I'm going to be doing here before I enter the final dungeon, I'm going to be selling all the extra items that we picked up that we don't need. It's like a bunch of equipment, a bunch of steals that we got from bosses. So at this point, we're probably going to need around, like, yeah, about... About 90,000. Yeah, about close to 90,000, because I for money uh, procs once we enter the second room of the sewers, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll give us almost 2,000, which will get us just above 90K. That'll, we and that'll guarantee all the veterans that we need. Yeah, we need uh, four veterans with armor corrosive in order to kill Esme. And so we go into the fight with 90K, and then we collect 30K from her to finish her off. So we steal from her and then use her money to pay to win. <laughs> That's embarrassing. We just beat her up and then steal her money and then beat her up again. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The, this is the hardest boss fight because of the RNG involved. You're always guaranteed to have one person go first, I believe. But uh, you really want Cyrus to go. 
if two people go before uh, Esmeralda gets an attack, the the fight is basically guaranteed. But, uh, one soul stone pickup before the fight starts. For the Esme fight, there's basically one good turn order and like 150 bad turn orders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of the route uh, was done just to optimize this final fight and save as much time as possible. Okay. One last safety save. All right. So we're hoping to see Cyrus first and a turn one break. Go. Come on. Oh uh, no. Well, oh, guess it wasn't required. <laughs> it wasn't guaranteed. Uh, this is, I think, a pretty good turn order. Yeah, I think this is winnable. Um, yeah, I guess I'll all of here. And, uh, oh, perfect. Yeah. They're in going first is what I need on turn two. There you nice. go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, good fight, right? Arch? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I have the Soul Stone, so I'll be able to do as much damage as I need. I will have to uh, pomegranate somewhere, but I'll figure that out when we get there. <laughs> you can probably use a Soul Stone at the end if you're low on BP. Oh, you're right. Uh, inside. So right here, Cyrus uses Insight, which makes all attacks target him. And when Esme recovers from her break, she's going to use a five-hit move that normally would kill the entire party. But uh, because Cyrus uses Insight, all five of them will target him, and Cyrus will basically just be killed off as a sacrifice. Like so. Uh, yeah, and we don't, we don't revive Cyrus after, so womp womp. After that, we just break Esme as soon as possible so she doesn't have a chance to uh, attack them. Um, you might I, need a hope for a good turn order. Yeah, I'm looking at it and I think... Oh, you're good. Oh, yeah, okay. Perfect. Here we go. Uh, here, I want to armor corrosive again. Right? You can palm um, Tressa. Okay, thank you, Jello. <laughs> Oh, you're going to need a soul stone with uh, there. Yeah, there. my problem I was thinking about was uh, having to redo armor corrosive, but it ended up being fine. Yeah. So here, Hana's going to collect the missing 30k so that we can afford another veterans, which costs 30k. Um, and then Tress is going to finish off Esme. Yep. One, two, three. Perfect. Done. There we go. Shout outs to the Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but that was the final boss, so just a little bit of movement and timing will end on the beach cutscene, which is the final cutscene before credits. So Tressa gets her diary back, everyone's happy. <laughs> end of story, we leave Kit to die. Oh no. <laughs> we leave Kit we leave Kit to starve. Yeah, Kit's actually a great character if you watch the later or the longer runs. And time. time. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great run. That's a fantastic run. Yeah, that was a run. really great run. Yeah, 47. My goal is a 49, which is it's possible with one death. But, uh, yeah, no deaths makes it very possible. I didn't expect it to go this well. I had such a safe estimate. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, like surprise attacks. Which actually, it did happen, but luckily I got a cat and they were nice. So, uh, <laughs> I guess a few shoutouts real quick. Uh, shoutouts to all my friends back there cheering me on. Uh, shoutouts to the Octopath community. Please join the Discord through SRC. A lot of, re <laughs> lot of resources and a lot of people that run and will help you out when you want to learn. And then, if you guys have any notes, final notes. Oh, we're good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. Thanks, everyone. Join the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Merman. Great run, man.
We are going to go for a Twitch ad real quick. I will be right back. Do not go anywhere. And welcome back. This is Awesome Games Done Quick 2019, coming to you live from Rockville, Maryland. We've got some setup going on right now for that Mega Man X1 through 3 Team Relay Race. That is going to be a thing, y'all. I cannot wait for that to start. But while we're getting ready for that, I still have a whole bunch of Octopath donations I want to make sure we're getting read in here. So let's go ahead and start with $20 from Tressa. My turn now. We've got $50 from Nate. Octopath was my surprise favorite game of 2018, and Tressa was my favorite character. Best of luck, and may your focus be unparalleled. We had a $10 donation from Mad Riddler, just says plus. And then I've got a $20 donation here from Green Shadow. Can you imagine an imaginary menagerie manager imagining managing an imaginary menagerie? Also, thank you. You guys are great out there. I love this crowd. Y'all the best. I've got a $100 donation here from Nesley Snipes. Really enjoyed the Octopath run, really hyped for the Mega Man Relay. Great marathon so far. All right, y'all, I need your help to prove a point here. I've got a $25 donation from Necklace One. I've seen you game, mister, but I'm not sure I've heard you shout. Can we all get a hype? I love the coda on that one. I'm getting called out here. Okay, we've got a $20 donation from some guy named Eli. Shout out to the awesome hosts. Reading sure is hard, so I'll give an extra $10 for each of these challenge words pronounced correctly. Oh man, here we go. Pseudomonas, aeruginosa, syzygy, tetrahydrofuran, ornithological, and teratogenic. 
I don't know how I did there. Yeah, all right, okay. I haven't heard of half of those, so we're rolling the dice on that one. I got another Octopath donation here from Anonymous for $250. Comment says, this is the prettiest game I've ever seen. You should check out that uh, Octopath art that we've got over in prizes then. I think it's sweet looking. I've got a $50 donation from Gleekin. So glad Octopath got a slot during this year, year's AGDQ, and glad it was with three of my favorite characters. Sorry, Hannett. That run was great. Octopath was my favorite game of 2018, and my heart is after that shadow box. I'm telling you, it's, it's even cooler in person. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for me tonight on the hosting desk. I'm going to be handed over to my man, Big John, as we get ready for this Mega Man X 1 through 3 relay. I'll be back tomorrow night for a few runs, so we will look forward to seeing you all in the future.
All right, you all. We're about ready to hype up this evening. We got the Mega Man block kicking off with the Mega Man X1 through 3 team relay race. We've got, let me see, what's the math? Three times three, eight, carry to one. Nine people about to show their skill across X1, X2, and X3. Let's just hope none of them die in the intro stage, eh? I'm watching. 200,000 people are watching. A whole lot of people are watching. Anyway, before we get started, yo, we got tons of donations coming in. You know how it is, the hype Mega Man block. We've got $100 from Tyler. Says, got to donate during the Mega Man block since X is one of my favorite games ever. Thanks to everyone putting on this great event. $25 anonymously donated with the comment of Mega Man X was my favorite game growing up, and I would love to see it beat quickly. Well, you found the right event, my friend. Thank you to all the support staff and people behind the scenes, as well as the runners. $50 from Kerplop. Kerplop. Got to see those peas there. I always look forward to the Mega Man block. Hope, you're, hope you take down those Mavericks faster than Sigma's virus. $25 from Mr. Z. And he says, Mega Man is always my holly for GDQ. This really is going to be hype. Shout outs to all the awesome runners in this race. $25 from Dryden72. Long time watcher here. Always a blast to see everyone having a great time blasting through games, all for charity. I'll donate another $25 if during the X race, now remember, y'all, listen now. This is important. This is money at stake here. During the X1 race, everyone can shout, what am I fighting for? Is that the right game? Oh, look, they won it, okay? So do it for the charity, okay? All right. $20 from uh, Shawnee. Says, Stoke from the Mega Man Runs. Thanks for all that you do, guys, uh, for PCF. Hello, one, two. <laughs> As we continue with a few more donations here from Saxon Fox, we got $50. Absolutely thrilled to see some good old games including that DOS game at GDQ this year. Got to push this towards seeing Mega Man DOS in the glorious four-color CGA palette. Much love to all the runners watching and volunteers who make GDQ possible. And don't forget, we still have a bid war going on for our Mega Man DOS, which is kind of a transition between our Mega Man block to our awful block. CGA has $2,700 flat, VGA $1,527. So... Do you want your eyes to hurt, or do you really want them to hurt? Make sure you all donate to them.
We also have $50 from Nervous Chameleon. Says, super excited to see this Mega Man X race. Good luck to all the runners.